Hey y'all, this is Georgie. Gosh, can you tell I'm from Texas? I just, hey y'all. Hello Leo lovers and welcome back. Um, this is Georgie here for my second uh, YouTube video. I was really happy with my first video. I got 11 subscribers now. It may not be a huge thing, but I was just happy to have subscribers. People want to watch my stuff. That's exciting. I thought a good second video to do today would be um, an introduction to my reptile room. I take you around my room and show you everything. Um, this won't be an all my pets necessarily video because I've got 103 geckos at the moment. Uh, two abronia, a beardy, and three cats and a dog. And I'm babysitting another dog at the moment, so if you hear a little high-pitched yip that sounds like a bird, that would be the five-pound Yorkie I am babysitting through July. <sighs> Let's get started, shall we? Mm -hmm. The reptile room. Oh. So it's a really tight entrance, but once you're in here, it's awesome. Did a little painting class yesterday with a bunch of my coworkers and it was like a little team bonding thing so we all made cute little signs. By the way, we're all working at an animal clinic so we're all animal lovers and I put my own little touch with the paw there. She, this is my bearded dragon. Her name is Valeria as in um, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, the Valyrian steel. So Valeria, because she's such a pretty steel gray color. This is her little pool. And I keep little bearded dragon feet in here at all times, but I put in fresh veggies about two to three times a week and feed her fresh mealworms about the same, but alternating. And here's her little basking area. So this is my desk area. See where I can do all my editing and stuff. I got my Abronia next to me. Currently doing everything on a laptop, which kind of sucks for video editing. So um, my fiance is super into gaming and building computers and all that stuff. So he's currently building me a desktop so that I can do a little bit more with my video editing. And his last video I edited, oh my gosh, it was like painfully laggy like painfully, but I got through it. I still have fun doing it, but could do without all the lagginess. Say, so, and I painted this little geode myself. So I enjoy doing the geodes. And look how cute the little hanging plant is. I found this at Hobby Lobby. Little Hobby Lobby. This little enclosure, they're still young. So this is not their permanent home. See how cute on my desk. I love watching them while I'm on my computer and stuff. Um, so I can't tell the difference between my male and female. So I haven't named them because I don't know which is which. When they're side by side, I can kind of tell because males have wider heads than the female. But when it's just one individual out at a time, I really have no clue. But I spray them down every morning and every night because they can dehydrate easily. They do need a little basking area, but the sun from the window works like perfectly. So it's warm, but not too warm. And then they can come get back over here in the shade if they get too hot. They're really fragile when it comes to overheating and dehydrating so other than that I've found them a fairly easy species to work with so far I really enjoy them this is Nicholas's setup he's got a pretty sweet setup here this is like his life man like he is all about gaming he's gonna start streaming soon and he's pretty awesome at like every game he plays um, 
forget the names he goes by, but he's pretty well known in a lot of the games he plays. So, yeah, we're thinking about doing a couple's streaming um, pretty soon once I get my desktop in. So that'll be fun. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I wanted to get some quick footage. Um, oh, man, I missed him. Um, Why are you so camera shy? Pretty sure this is my meal behind the coconut. I left the meal. I just added some worms and dubias. We're having some interest. My favorite rack system, hands down, without hesitation, is the sea serpents rack system. So there they are. There is their website and everything, so you can go get them. They make them relatively quickly, like within two weeks they can have them shipped out to you, which is insanely quick. Um, they come already put together, heat tape installed, all that good stuff with the tubs. And these tubs are awesome because they're like the same width at the top as they are at the base. Say so a lot of Tupperware containers taper like that, so the space on the bottom where your animal's actually staying is like smaller. Um, than the top where they're not even utilizing the space. So I like these boxes because they have a little more room. And um, they're also pretty lightweight. Like I can pick up one of these, um, like this size one, by myself pretty easily. So with us moving frequently, that's really nice. They're also stackable, so like this one has, um, is actually two separate rack systems put on each other. The adult tubs. These are my all my 2018 babies in here and as you can see we are almost full and um, these are my uh, 2017 holdbacks and I will pick and choose and show you a few because it would take forever to show you everybody. Um, and this is the one rack I didn't get from uh, Sea Serpents and it sucks like <laughs> they do the weird taper thing and so they're really tiny um, the com I'm not gonna bash on the company I got them from um, but they took the heat tape somewhere the wiring is faulty and it does not work so it's my brumation rack over here in the corner because it's darker and it has no heat in it and I'm sure if I could break it apart and take it apart, I could probably fix the heat tape, but it's just a pain and I'm kind of frustrated with the whole situation. Also, it has like dividers in between each tub, which kind of add weight to the rack and that one is ridiculously heavy compared to the other ones. Um, so yeah, not happy with that one at all. I would have shipped it back, but I didn't even pull it out of the box until like couple weeks after I had received it and threw all the shipping material away before I plugged it in which was stupid so it didn't work and I didn't want to go through the hassle of having to ship it back because it's big and heavy and I just was done at that point so there it lays I might take it to an expo and like sell it as for what it is and get something out of it and have some more space but for now it's the brumation rack Got a little calendar over here so I can keep organized. I also have, um, this is like my little cleaning station. Um, I stained and cut this myself as well and waxed it so it's nice and soft. Um, here are my supplements. We use Vianate and Osteoform SA, a combination of the two. Um, my ratio isn't really exact, but I use primarily this with a dash of that. <laughs> Um, and then this is Rapashi um, Grub Pie for anyone I have to force feed. Or sometimes babies are just a little low on calcium in the beginning, so I'll mix this with some calcium and syringe feed it to them a couple of days, and normally that will just make them bounce back and then they're fine and eating good on their own again. Um, here's my list uh, when I'm having a a busy week and I need to keep up with what chores were done when I, and I can't remember who I fed what days and when I remisted my eggs I'll write them on here 
Um, here's kind of a little key for myself. Um, needed supplies, adult rec. Huh. That probably won't happen for a little while. Um, and then additional notes here. I actually made myself with a watercolor board. Um, I did the lettering with Sharpie by hand. I had fun with that. And then all this down here is with watercolor. I really like doing watercolor. So if you follow me on Instagram and you watch my latest story, you will know that I had an outbreak of superworms all over my apartment and I found out about it at 5.30 a.m. one morning when one was in our bed. Yes, in our bed. And they were all over the house. And we've still been collecting them here and there. See, up here I've got this awesome leopard, hence Aztec leopards. I actually got this guy. He's a resin sculpture that I found in Mexico. This is, so here's some. These two will most likely be put up for sale. I'm almost certain they'll be put up for sale. All of my total eclipses are temp sexed for female. There's my little one. This one has a nice little thin uh, neck stripe. So she was going to be my hold back, but I'm going to let her go as well because I got one with a better neck band. See, so these two will most likely be up for sale. These are mine. These are going to stay, both of them, because they're so cool. Completely white tails, huge white neck band, and huge white on the face, which is fabulous. Let me show you while we're on temple eclipses or super snow eclipses. This is one of my um, holdbacks from 2017. This is Unicorn. So she's got a predominantly white tail as well and pretty white head markings. She's got like a little twisted horn. Hence the name Unicorn. She's pretty and magical. So I kind of went with fantasy names for my total eclipses. See, this is our other 2017 fullback female, Potion. Here's Potion. So I really like I like to name my breeders. It just makes them a little bit more personable to me to have a name instead of an ID number. They still have ID numbers, but my breeders that I keep back, I always give a name. Just cause. So, and she's got some nice markings on her tail as well. With the white. It's a really pretty face. And her like confirmation and structure is just really pretty. It's just really nice. One of my 2018 babies. This is a hold back. This is one of my bold snows. And they're amazing. I want more of these. So this one's just the best of the bunch by far. She will be staying here with me. Don't be at first. Easy little one. So she's really nice. So you can get that stripe. She is. I think she'll be really cool once she's matured out. There she is. Of course, she's in shed. Yay, velvet. But she's got a really awesome stripe. Let's see, and these are her babies. She's normally a lot brighter than this. If you're wondering what's on my hand, it says prevention because I need to give my animals all of their heartworm and flea prevention today since it's the beginning of the month and I forgot to do it yesterday, which was technically the first of the month. So I don't forget. I'm very pro prevention. Give your pets heartworm and flea and tick prevention. It's really important. 
expensive, but it's really important. Starting a dark project because that was Nicholas's request. He thought he just like got really excited when I showed him Black Knights and he was like, why don't you make a black gecko? And I was like, try to explain to him it's a polygenic project, it'll take years to perfect. And he's just, he really liked them and so I told him I would do a dark project um, for him. So here's kind of the start of it. This is a little snow blizzard. They just stare into your soul. They look you right in the eye. I'll show you Piper. She is my pied raptor. What? Raptors can be pied? Yeah, they can. Um, Art Geckos actually had some pied raptors, and this is one of them. He only had three when I bought her, so I had one of the three only pied raptors. Not only is she pied, but she has like really nice color to her, and she has two solid red ruby eyes. And a really good personality on top of it. She's just an all around really awesome gecko. I wanted a raptor male to breed to her, so I actually put a pair together specifically to create the perfect male for her. And that would be this little guy once he's grown. He is a son of Nana. Nana produces like the best raptors and they're like the good um, traditional you know, patternless stripe raptors, which is what I really like. And I held back three babies from her 2017 group. I will show you them. This is one. See, she's got really nice color. She's also got a blue spot on her head. Okay, and then this one, who may not really be a raptor, she might be an after. She has some crazy color. Sorry, my hands are shaking. I need to eat a snack. Let's still girl. See, she needs a name. I look at her and I want to call her like Sunkissed or Starburst or something, but I feel like that's really used a lot, so. And she has like Abyssinian eyes. Oop. Come here, girl. She fine. There she is. She has some crazy looking eyeballs. Put her back. And then the last one of that group that I kept is Hera. It was just airy and gorgeous and beautiful. She's a really high expression white and yellow raptor. She is also a little bit of a moody one. She has Nana's personality. She's a very faint, like heavenly looking yellow. for the Calico project, and that would be Tiger Lily. She's awesome. She's like this really nice burnt orange, and she's like going in the shed right now. And her tail is like insanely orange, and she almost looks purple in some areas. She's just really, really nice gecko. Nice and fat too, which is good her making racket because she thinks I'm feeding and she wants me to not forget her because I will sometimes. <laughs> you goob. Why do we have this big garage shelf? I've got some storage up there. Um, Beardy's enclosure that I had bought at the Herps Conroe show from Syntex Custom Reptile Cages. They did a really good job. Like, I'm already wanting more of these. I would really like to put one on this shelf and on this shelf. Um, but for right now, I've got just her. I'll get her a Whitlet mail eventually. There she is. This was clean, and now she's pooped everywhere and run through it because she's lovely. She's crazy, but she's lovely. Hey, pretty girl. 
got my incubators. This is my original one. It's quite old. It's probably like three years old. This is my female incubator. And then this is my male incubator that I just got this year. So uh, this is my first season um, producing males again. Well, I did my first year, but I had like one male hatchling, so I don't know if I have that. Um, this is the actual incubator I used, and it's made for chickens. I bought a reptile-specific incubator um, back on my first year of breeding, and it had the little wafer and I had no luck with that. I like fried all my eggs, it was just, it didn't work. I really like this one because it's digital and it's easy to read and it works really well for me. Like, I feel like raising leopard gecko eggs is like a trial and error thing and once you figure it out, it's like superstitious to like do it any way different. Like you keep your, your routine if you find a good one. So that's what we do. And then this one down here is just storage. This was Beardy's enclosure, but she hated it because of all the glass and the top access. She hated it, it's stressful. Also, we'll probably be adding a new family member or two um, this fall. I ha used to have a ferret and I absolutely love ferrets. They're like one of my favorite little furry animals. And I am determined to get another one if not two, um, I'm actually probably gonna go after this to Petco down the road just to go play with some because I need some ferret love and I want Molly's top ferret. But I want to get a healthy one and I want to get a specific color, so um, and also a friendly one. So it might be a while till I find my perfect fur baby. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be collecting supplies and uh, and hopefully adding a furry baby number. So next time I do one of these updates, I'll do in all my pets and uh, hopefully I can have my ferrets in there. So and if you don't like ferrets, what's wrong with you? Because they're amazing. They're awesome. They're like little clowns and they like are slinkies and no, they're not rats. They actually have like little um, predator teeth. Like they don't gnaw and have to constantly gnaw and chew down their teeth because they're continuously growing. They're actually true carnivores. They're kind of like uh, superstars out in the wild. Like they hunt rabbits out in the wild, which are like way bigger than them. Like they're kind of they're kind of badass. So if you don't like ferrets, you just don't know much about them because they're amazing. And um, ever since the Herps Conroe Expo, I saw this kid walking around with this amazing white-ish gray snake and after um, researching a little bit I came to find it was actually a white-sided rat snake. Now I know everyone gets those moments where they see that animal and they're just like oh my gosh I have to have that and I had this moment with this snake and I'm not a big snake person like I think they're pretty, but I'm not sure how I would like their personal care. So I've been kind of um, obsessing over this white-sided rat snake and doing a little bit of research. So if anyone knows of any breeders that are actively breeding white-sided rat snakes, please let me know because I might want to get me one of those one day. So thank you for watching, and until next time, this is the Curious Georgie of the Aztec Leopards. I forgot to show y'all this cool feature.